Then when do I start? I start now. Okay. Hi. Hello. So we're actually friends, uh, but I'm gonna act like I don't know anything about you, just so everybody knows about you more. Like, and we can talk. 100%. So tell me, what is your passion? My passion? Yeah. Uh, my passion is absolutely jujitsu. Absolutely jujitsu. Absolutely jujitsu. Nothing on the side. Nah. I, okay, I'll watch some football. Let's say. Yeah. Watch some anime, but like my absolute passion is jujitsu for for sure. And when did you discover this passion? Um, funny story because when I was like in middle school, I was overweight. I got kicked out f from a football club because I was from too fat. From a what? Football club. I didn't know this. Yeah. Okay. I was kicked out for being too lazy. So I was like, you know what? I think I will not have a future in any sports. You know what I mean? Okay. Until high school, one of my friends came to me and he's like, yo, bro, there's this UFC gym. I'm like, UFC gym? Okay. What the hell is a UFC gym? He's like, the, the fighting thing that they put on TV. I'm like, okay. really? And before this, were you interested in fighting? I watched a lot of anime, so there was a, there like, was a lot of there fighting. Was, yeah. yeah, there was okay. an interest like to be able to handle myself in competitions. Yeah. So the moment he showed me that, I'm like, show me a move. This motherfucker put me to sleep. <laughs> I tapped, you put me to sleep. I'm like, you know what? This is fucking cool as fuck, man. I want to try this. You enjoyed people putting you to sleep? Now I was like, damn, man. This is legit, you know? It's yeah. not some dead of shit, you know what I mean? So the rest is history. I joined, I never stopped. I trained MMA for like a couple of years. Then I did Jiu Jitsu, just purely Jiu Jitsu. Then Elements opened up. Uh, my coach, Ivan Ferdi. Um, shout out. Shout out to Ivan Ferdi, Elements. <laughs> Best Jiu Jitsu club. Uh, and the Middle East, not even Bahrain. Okay. So, uh, I joined him. His mentality, the way he talks, like I was like, you know what? I can be a champion under this great champion because he is a world champion. I never stopped. So, you were a champion from before, and you just want to discover this passion. Yeah, yeah. But he kind of fueled it up. Yeah, yeah, the way he talks, the way like, you know, we have this thing in Bahrain where like. Oh, you won't be able to achieve that because you're Bahraini. Oh, yeah. You won't be able to achieve that because, oh, they are the West. You can't do anything about it. You know what I mean? They are born like that. That's not his mentality. His mentality is that if you work hard enough, you will be able to become a world champion or a champion. It's so crazy because I was just talking about this in another interview about like people putting barriers as we were like kids growing up. عبالك انت وين قاعد في امريكا exactly. انت في البحرين ترى yeah. and you gotta do something like in a certain way there's like a rule book yeah. no absolutely not do whatever you want and that's how you're gonna you know achieve what you want so yeah yeah like his mentality was different but I'm like see that's the mentality that we need and I and, and I you know respect people who break through you know yeah, out yeah, of that yeah, mentality yeah, yeah. like it takes so much for someone to do what they want and like that they have the balls to do what they want yeah, you know yeah, yeah. like he puts in the time and his dedication is like amazing like us the new generation we just look at him and we're like damn like if he can do it for sure we can do it under him you know what i mean anyways okay <laughs> so um can you tell me like what keeps you going in jiu-jitsu? Like you know sometimes you have a passion but with time a lot of people lose the motivation they lose that you know spark a little bit you know they just yeah. need that push what is that push to you? The thing is um, currently I'm not as like consistent with jiu-jitsu because of like uni I'm at my senior year in engineering so like I'm not as consistent but what keeps me going is the fact that I don't want to live a normal life where like I have a family, I have a degree and have kids and then die. I want to leave a message, I want to leave a message that see, we are the first generation that, became, that broke through the Middle oh, East. Yeah. So I want people instead of looking at people from outside of Bahrain or outside of Arabs to be like, oh, these are for example Arabs or Muslims that became more champions. We can be like, it's not impossible. It's not. You know what I mean? It's, it's just that you break through the mentality, that's it. It's true. There's true. not much to it than just breaking through. Yeah, yeah. that's nice. I, that's actually a good way to look at it. Because yeah. you know, a lot of people would just say discipline, you know, and you know, discipline, when you say it, it's easier said than done. True. But then when you have like, kind of like that goal, 
you know yeah. that dream where like ah like yeah. i want to do that yeah, yeah, yeah you know always having a goal is kind of like what pushes you more than being just and what keeps me going is the fact that i see my teammates they're all at like they're at the same age as me they're yeah. like 25 24 23 and they are winning tournaments they the the work they put in it just motivates me yeah i can't be lazy when i look at them i look up to them in a lot of aspects for example they are way more consistent than me yeah so i have to try harder you know what i mean yeah. they're really motivating to see that people my age having the same vision the same dream it's just like inspiring to see like the fire never goes away when you have that type of mentality that type of teammates around you so as an athlete who's also a senior in the university, what is like the most challenging part of your whole like journey? A hundred percent keeping uh, like keep in touch with my friends, with my studies, because engineering is hard as a motherfucker, man. Engineering is annoying. You know what I mean? And just time management, I'd say. I'm not that great at it. Shows my inconsistency in jiu-jitsu. But like, I'm trying my best and I know my time will come. And once I graduate, I have all of my free time for jiu-jitsu. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. Do you see yourself uh, opening up a jiu-jitsu club? No, man, to be honest, no. No? No, man. I, I'm, I'm, I can't be tolerant, you know, I get annoyed. <laughs> I get to know. You, you remember when I taught you guys some moves? I, I got to know. I remember. Really so basically, I did in COVID when it was locked down. I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but yeah, go go. It's just like I don't know if it's violating the guidelines yeah. of what. We were five. Okay. Yeah. We were five. Yeah. <laughs> so we basically it was locked down and we didn't know where to go. There was no gyms open, and no, nothing was open basically. Yeah. And we're used to just going out and seeing each other outside. So we had to just see each other inside of the house. And we wanted to do something because it's just like sitting and talking to each other is nothing, right? So we wanted to do something. Can I have you say we bought an all match? And we went to Dragon City. We bought uh, jiu -jitsu, mats, uh, not yeah. jujitsu mats. They were normal kid kitty mats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were affordable for us right now. True. <laughs> and thanks to Ali, he bought them for us. <laughs> And he matted like his grandma's house, like um, a side of it. Yeah. And we started like, uh, he started teaching us some moves. And like, I, I have experience with Jiu Jitsu before. And it's, it's different when you teach someone from like scratch, Trust when me. they don't know anything. Yeah. So I saw him not even the second day lose his temper and he couldn't handle it. <laughs> and, and we were like, I was just seeing him, I was like, yeah, you can't handle like coaching someone. You can't <laughs> no, handle teaching. I can't, man. You know, I can't. He, you're a good athlete, but yeah. not a teacher. Yeah, I can't. Man. Not a lot of people have the guts to say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, true, um, true. But yeah, no, I, I saw it and we stopped doing that for a while. For so a long while. We did, we did stop doing that. And then it turned into like buying dumbbells. Yeah, yeah and like, the home gym. Though, yeah. You know, the underground dumbbells. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then it's Kalam. What's the name? Lisa Wil Hadid. Laham. Laham. A friend of mine. So Laham Hagrak. Yeah, bro. DIY man. DIY. DIY that, and everybody started working out. Yeah. Like good days. it was good times. We're just reminiscing about like 2020. It was kind of a hard time because it's different. Yeah. But it was a, a time where we we're all like, oh wow. Yeah. True. True. You know. We had a lot of fun in 2020. Yeah. Uh, yeah. T tell me, like, what, what is like your highlights of 2020? What, what in your house oh you know <laughs> the highlights like, like like tell me some like snippets here and there um and what like um, how do you feel about the it? abuse my friends faced against my grandma <laughs> i think uh Radir has a uh, first-hand experience in that yeah okay can you give us a brief about the grandma <laughs> yeah she would beat up any friend that comes to my grandma's house yeah not friendly at all not friendly at all man not uh, friendly at all <laughs> but it's not like it's not like you know we get a beating from her and then we stop going we still showed up yeah, yeah, yeah. every single time yeah, yeah. because ali is the one who's telling us like <laughs> you know, just just don't don't give her face yeah, don't yeah, talk yeah. to her don't look at her don't look at her away just walk don't even yeah, bother yeah. and that kind of like made us go even more and more yeah. and more and like sometime one time <laughs> i used the bathroom yeah. and she was so mad that i used her bathroom yeah she comes like and i was waiting for her to leave i hear her voice all right she's wait i'm waiting for her to leave 
30 minutes passed yeah. and I'm sweating in the bathroom. I was like, okay, I'm opening the door. As soon as I open the door, I, I just see myself facing the wall. Like <laughs> she she's so fucking tiny. She's like this tiny and she just pushed me like whoop. Yeah. And I was like, let yeah. has you know? yeah. oh to <laughs> So like all of our friends faced some kind of abuse yeah. towards that grandma. A lot of abuse, that's some kind of, a lot of abuse. Yeah, like. It was, it's good so, times, good times. It's so bro. funny because sometimes Ali wouldn't give a heads up to the new friends that would come in. <laughs> and like, as soon as the door opens and we're all chilling, we'd see just like, Nala to play up to the. I love trolling and people, like, man. I and love. They're, and they're like so shocked. Yeah. Their reactions are so pure. Like, I see the state of pack, it just makes me laugh. You know what I mean? I do feel bad a little bit for the people who don't know. Yeah, a little bit. A little and bit. A little yeah. bit. <laughs> so, yeah. No, that that that's like, like one of the highlights. And then what's what's the other thing? Bro, the gatherings, like the deep talks, the midnight talks, man. Like the talks would take hours and hours debating about like our beliefs, our thoughts, our goals. Yes, we laughed a lot. At some point, it looked like we were joking around a lot. But man, that experience, we grew a lot of that experience. Having that different mentalities, talking to each other opening up to each other just made me see a world from a different perspective you know what i mean i'm like yo that makes sense you know what i mean like it is a memory that i would always appreciate you know what i mean yeah the group we had and we're still close with like almost all of them like we're like brothers still but you know covid ended life happened yeah we just move on but still like we still appreciate those moments because True. we did learn so much about not just everybody else but of about ourselves and true, we true. you know when when like you're busy with life and you just it's on repeat you mm. don't realize what you want to do you don't get the time to reflect yeah but when you're forced at home you get the time to reflect and be like oh shit i did that i did yeah. this you know and that's like a very big eye opener to all of us yeah like it made us refocus a little bit a on, lot a lot, on a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah yeah all right yeah that's great nice we're done.